Right then, now you have to solder onto a piece of railway track. First of all, you've got to make sure it's clean. It's going to look a bit odd because I'm doing this sort of over my shoulder. Well, this is going to be a bit in the engine shed. Use one of these, a fiberglass pencil. Give the track where you're going to solder a bit of a scrub to make sure it's all nice and clean and shiny. Then what I use is 15 amp fuse wire to make the droppers. I just run my wire cutters along it gently just to make sure, just take any tarnish off and that makes it nice and easy. Cut a nice long length, it's cheap enough so you don't have to worry too much about that. And bend a little notch in the end. Now that's going to go up against the side of the track. The solder that I use is normal 60-40. Just put it down there bend it to make it into some sort of shape so it sits up nicely and see what you're doing then you can see what I'm doing make sure the tips nice and clean and just put, put it on there a little bit of solder and that makes sure that it's tinned nicely same with the track a bit on the side a little bit of heat and you can see hopefully there uh, you couldn't see because my hand was in the way Right, we'll do another one just up here. I'll try and keep my hand out of the way this time. Because this is going to be the engine shed and running DC. I'm going to need power at different points. This is where it's going to get interesting. Let's wedge it with a wedge it with the solder. Let's have a look. Let's zoom in a bit there. Right, there we go. It's got the focus again now. Right. Let's try and keep my hands out of the way this time. Put the soldering on just on the side there. Just touch it with the solder and then just there you go. Lovely. Hopefully you saw it that time. Right, then we'll get the piece of wire that we made earlier on for a dropper. Place that against the side. No need for extra solder because there's already enough on there. Just add a little bit of heat. And just hold it. I don't know if you saw that all right. Let's take it off and uh, do it again. All right, we'll carry on. On the other side, where the droppers have come through, before we think we're going to start raving mad. Such long wires. What I then do with the wire coming through, it's got a copper panel pin. And just holding on to the wire, just. Tap it in so it's still got a fair bit of it showing out, at least half of it, and get the wire and wrap it round a few times. Cut off the piece that you don't need, bend that, find the solder, oh there it is over here, and then solder onto that. Takes a little bit more heat obviously because the pin's quite big and that way I've got a nice secure fixing point that I can attach quite a few wires to so uh, as you can see that way it makes life a lot easier right, now I've threaded the wire through make sure it's neat I'll come up to the pin now a bit more all right you want to cut it about there Use that short piece elsewhere. It needs we want it to be about that much. And once again, just nick the side of the wire. Give it a tug like that. Pull it up. Because it's a bit longer this time, if you twist it as you take it off, it wraps it all up nicely for you. Wrap this then around where my copper nail came through or where I'll put the copper nail in keeping the other wire out of the way and solder it on make sure we've got a good tight joint I'll 
closely making sure that I label which pin it goes to so I know for later on when it comes to the rest of the wiring up and that goes to pin 13 so I'll just put 13 by there and I know which one it goes to there you go, repeat for the rest of them and uh, you end up with a lovely lovely looking thing if I come round here I just want to zoom out, there you go you can see there all the wiring, well it's almost finished now for the underside of the main part of the board uh, there's one more point motor to go in and a few more wires and we'll be finished <laughs>